feel good. I feel great. I feel wonderful. I feel good. I feel great. I feel wonderful. I feel 30 good. years ago, back in 1990, great. these buildings behind us were already I abandoned. Filming crews came here, painted them up, and turned it into the town of Winnipesaukee. Winnipesaukee, Lake Winnipesaukee, of course, is located in New Hampshire. There actually is no town of Winnipesaukee. That was all made up. Plus, we're not even in New Hampshire. We're in Mineta, Virginia, in the old downtown area. Now, if you'll notice, right over here, these railroad tracks came through. According to a local, that shut this road down, which it does appear the local is correct. And over there, the rest of downtown, there's a bunch of abandoned buildings as well. So that kind of shut the whole town down. But this turned into a wonderful version of Winnipesaukee. In this video, we're gonna take you around, show you the filming locations for the incredibly funny, I mean, I loved this movie as a kid. I still love it today. The incredibly funny 1991 film with Bill Murray, called What About Bob? Which Bob! Is why this is in this movie as well. We're so excited about this one. We hope you are too. We cordially invite you to come along for the adventure. Come along. At the beginning of the movie, Bob went to go meet with his new psychotherapist, Dr. Leo Marvin. When he got to the building, he realized that his office was actually on the 44th floor. He could not work up the nerve to get on the elevator, so he decided to walk up all 44 flights. When he got up there to his office, he was really worn out. That's right, he sat down with Dr. Marvin. He told him, I get dizzy spells, nausea, cold sweats, hot sweats, difficulty breathing, difficulty swallowing, blurred vision, involuntary trembling, what if I'm looking for a bathroom? I can't find one. My bladder explodes. Well, sure enough, Dr. Marvin said, you got some problems, but I got what might be a solution. This brand new book right here, he looks on the shelf. He's got a whole stack of his own books sitting there. He pulls one out. It's called Baby Steps. He gives it to Bob. Later, he says, I got to charge him $29.95 for that book. So Bob starts baby stepping out of the office. Baby steps out of the office. Baby steps onto the elevator, and he baby steps his way around. Problem is, the Dr. Marvin's heading out of town. He's going on vacation for a month, and Bob... Didn't like that too much. Bob didn't want him gone. He needed somebody to talk to. So Bob calls his call center and says, you know, where's Leo? I need to talk to him. He talks to him on the phone. Leo says, stop calling me. I'm on vacation. Finally, Bob actually goes up to the call center. He sits down and says that he's a detective and Bob has committed suicide and he needs to find out where Dr. Leo Marvin is on vacation. He finds out he's on vacation at Lake Winnipesaukee. So he gets on a bus. He comes into Lake Winnipesaukee, of course, in Virginia here. And you actually see the bus go over this railroad track sign right there. It's still somewhat visible on the road. You also see this building right here as the bus drives by. It then pulls around right over here and pulls into this gravel area right down there. When Bob got off the bus, he stood right here. People were cheering because he got off the bus. They were happy to see him gone. Over here, you could see through the bus windows that building. And if you looked over here, there was an enjoy Coca-Cola sign on the building. Of course, lucky for Bob, at that exact moment in time, Dr. Leo Marvin and his family were inside this store right here shopping for the film crew. Do you think we got enough for the whole film crew? And she says, I think we got enough for the whole town. Let's take a look inside. And first, what about Bob? There it is. Someone has used their finger in the dust to write, what about Bob on the window? Inside, there's a lot of trash and a Christmas tree. Merry Christmas, Bob, and everyone watching. The view through this window gives us the best look at the staircase that you can see in the movie. You can see Anna pushing the cart in front of the stairs with Siggy right behind her. Then, Dr. Leo Marvin stands in front of this case right here to check out. Dr. Marvin walked through this door right here with his family, then walked down the porch. His wife, Faye, said, Honey, is someone calling you right over there? Bob would have been standing in this area here yelling out, Dr. Marvin! Dr. Leo Marvin, Dr. Marvin, over and over again. Dr. Marvin looks over and is quite surprised to see Bob standing here. So it was right here 
in front of the coffee shop where Bob says, the fam, he's excited to see Dr. Leo Marvin's family, but Dr. Marvin's not too excited to see him. He's waiting for him over here by the ice machine. I gotta walk carefully down these steps. They're in bad shape. All right, so right here, where the ice machine was set up and he met up with Dr. Leo Marvin and they discussed the fact that Bob is in really bad shape and he needs his help. And they go back and forth about, you know, this is not appropriate. He said, you're mad. I don't get mad. Well, you're angry. I don't get angry. Of course, later in the movie, we find out he does get mad and he does get angry. They climbed up here on the stairs with Dr. Marvin going first and he gets to right about right there where Heather is. Stop. Oh. <laughs> and Bob says, Give me, give me, give me. I need, I need, I need. All right, all right, all right. I'll call you at four. That's right. And Bob wants 3.30. They go back and forth. So Bob goes into the coffee shop to wait for that four o'clock. Four o'clock phone call. Bob then waited in this building right here for that four o'clock phone call. Then he started to freak out because he realized that he needed to change the water in Gil's jar. That's right. He says, he's been locked in here for about eight hours. He's about to scream. A fish screaming. Anyway, he's furious. Sorry, Gil. Little negligence on my part. Now, he's looking at the clock. It says 3 o'clock. Somebody tries to use the phone. He said, no, 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 I'm waiting on a phone call, even though it's an hour early. <laughs> but the great thing is, he said, I'm waiting on a phone call from Dr. Marvin. And Mr. and Miss Gutman run this coffee shop behind us. Of course, they can't stand Leo Marvin. So that's how Bob is able to figure out the exact location of the vacation home the Marvins are staying in for their trip. Here's where the counter was for the coffee shop. Then in the back, the double doors were entering the kitchen area. This one is really falling apart. The floor is starting to cave in. Of course, this was also the store that Dr. Marvin broke into to try to find an object to kill Bob. That's right, he looks at the guns first. No, too messy. He looks at the bow and arrow and says, not painful enough. Looks at the explosive and says, yes! And sure enough, he grabs the explosives and heads out to find Bob. These buildings are all in terrible shape. You can tell that they've been deteriorating for a while now. So if you want to get a look at them before they fall down completely, you may want to hurry. Over here is where the Enjoy Coca-Cola sign was located on the side of the building. We're at where the insane asylum was, where Dr. Marvin dropped Bob off at. There was a guardhouse over here. Right in here somewhere, the guard, of course, leaned out and said, Hey, you're Bob Wiley. I saw you on TV. You were great. Was this the second time that that had happened to Dr. Leo that day where Bob had been recognized, but not Dr. Leo. So that was helping to build up that anger inside of him. All right, let's head on up here and see the insane asylum. Everything's decorated for Christmas here. Even got the three wise men. This is actually the Elks National Home, which is a retirement community here in Bedford, Virginia. We can't go inside right now because of COVID, but you can see everything on the outside looks the same as it did when Leo dropped Bob off here in the movie, including the railing. We are now headed to the Marvin Family Vacation Home. Yeah, this is one that's on private property. It's kind of behind another house. It's kind of weird to get up to. I'm not sure what kind of shot we're going to get out there. But let's go see what we can see when we get there. Come on. Come on. There's the Marvin Family Vacation Home. Then, right over here, let's pause this because it's really cool. In the background is the deck. Ziggy learned to dive with Bob's assistance and without any help from his father. Then, in the front of that is a wooden structure Bob took a shower in after being pushed into the lake by Leo. Here are the steps in front of the house where Bob and the Marvin family stood to greet the Good Morning America crew when they showed up to film. Dr. Marvin was standing behind a screen door which is no longer on the house. Of course, many other scenes took place in the house, yard, and lake right here. Here's a view of the dock from across the lake. They've added a covering over the dock and a gazebo since the movie was filmed. If you look close enough, you can see the house in the background. Towards the end of the movie, after Dr. Marvin got pulled over, he got a flat tire. And as he was trying to change it, a car came by and whoosh, covered him <laughs> in mud. Splashed him with mud and then he goes home. Sure enough, there's a surprise party for him. He's covered in mud. He's trying to fix up his tie, but he's happy. He's very happy to be having the surprise party until he sees his sister's in from out of town. And then Bob walks up 
puts his arm around his sister. And he was furious. He jumps off the porch right onto Bob. After Dr. Marvin got a hold of Bob, he bound him up. And he put two things of explosives onto him. That's right, it was somewhere in a wooded area. We're not sure exactly where that filming scene took place. Of course, Bob managed to escape. He heads back to Dr. Marvin's house, comes out for he's a jolly good fellow and all that, carrying the cake. And uh, the house explodes. The house explodes! Because he had left the explosives in the house. Now, for that part of the, of the film, film crews made a three-quarter size version of that house, put it on a lot down the road, and actually blew the thing up for that particular part of the film. So, thankfully, they didn't blow up the actual lake house. Just one they had created for the movie. Of course, after that, Bob ends up getting married to Dr. Leo Marvin's sister. That wedding took place out in a church in Los Angeles, California. We're not going to head out there for that. So we're going to wrap it up now. Y'all be sure to hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell so you can come along with us on future adventures. Come along.